welcome students to the wonderful world of word problems. So we're going to do some practice here. I've got five examples. Each one takes a couple minutes, so I thought that would make for a good video. And i got a little bit of everything here. A little bit of um, some of the newer ones that we've done. A little bit more review with the age word problems, for example. Let's jump in and get started. All right. Example one. Candy bars are sold in a local store for 50 cents. The factory has $1,000 in fixed costs plus 10 cents of additional expense for each candy bar made. All right. Assuming all candy bars manufactured can be sold, find the break-even point. So now we see what kind of problem this is. This is a break-even problem. All right, let's uh, start by defining a variable. Let's make x number of candy bars. Now let's think about the two different circumstances we have. We have the cost and we have our, um, we call it gross profit or um, um, revenue would be another word you can use, the amount of money coming in. So cost, money going out, revenue, money coming in. And remember, you're trying to figure out where they are equal. Let's look at the cost first. $1,000 in fixed costs plus 10 cents of additional expense for each candy bar made. So they have to spend $1,000 to make these candy bars plus, say, the materials, the ingredients, 10 cents per candy bar. Now, we did a bit of practice with this in class, so this is probably not a gigantic challenge right here to figure this out, that it's 10 cents times X. You sell them for 50 cents a piece. Okay, and what they're doing is they're probably sending, selling them for 50 cents a piece to the, um, to the convenience store, for example, and then, of course, the convenience store has to mark them up, so you pay more than 50 cents um, for the candy bars. And that's the equation we need to solve. So, as we've done before with all of our equations with variables on both sides of the equation, we're going to start off by getting rid of the smaller value of my variable and also the... Uh, the only value for the variable that's on that left-hand side. Uh, we don't want to subtract the 0.50x because then we're not going to have anything on the right-hand side. Easy from here. 1,000 equals 40 cents times x. Divide by 40 cents. Okay, so again, I'm way too lazy to go find a calculator. Okay, my phone is right next to me playing music, but still, I'm still too lazy. I don't feel like opening it up. So I'm going to multiply this by 10 to get rid of the decimal and add a zero to, to match. So I'm multiplying both top and bottom by 10. So I have 10,000 divided by 4, which is 2,500. 2,500 candy bars. So in the end, we should probably go ahead and do what we're supposed to here with the um, actual problem. Um, the company, the company will break even with 2,500 candy bars with 2,500 bars. All right, so one break-even problem. Let's try another one. The length of a rectangle is four more than twice its width. If the perimeter of the rectangle is 38 inches, find the width of the rectangle. Now, of course, I'm okay with you guys being able to figure out a problem without an equation, but if I ask for the equation, that's part of the assignment. So the perimeter here is 38, and let's define our variables. So let's define the width as W, Okay, and guys, if you're zooming through on this, then do like we usually say and pause it, try it, and see if you can do it on your own. Four more than, four more than, twice the width, 2w. So uh, 2w plus 4. So the perimeter of the triangle is going to be adding all four of those sides together. So 2 of the width plus 2 of the length. And when we simplify that all the way down, we're going to have 2w plus 4w, 6w plus 8. And then from there, we're going to follow our regular two-step equation rules. Subtract 8, 6w equals 30. And finally, w equals 5. And that's what we were asked to find this time. The width is 5 inches. So the first two were not too difficult. Um, let's move on to a couple of age word problems. So these are a little bit more challenging. They're going to take us a little bit longer. Okay, five years ago, John's age was half of the age he will be in eight years. How old is he now? You have three unknowns here. 
And this is what we're going to be working on. Hopefully you're a little bit more comfortable by the time you left class after this next class here that's coming up. For me, previous class for you guys because you're watching this after class, you have three unknowns here. You have John's age now. John's age now. We'll define that in a minute. John's age five years ago. Okay, these are easier to define than you think. John's age in eight years. Okay, let's name John's age now. Let's give that our variable. I'm going to use A. John's age five years ago. Well, how old is John five years ago if he's A years old now? He's A minus five. Five years ago, you would subtract five from his age, and that would give you his age five years ago. Okay, so if you take his age now, subtract five, that's his age five years ago. So, similarly, how will I define his age in eight years? Well, his age in eight years is his age now plus eight. So we have our three unknowns written. Okay, that's actually the easiest part. Now we've got to write the equation, okay? We're going to break this sentence up. Five years ago, John's age was is a version of the word of the a verb is or to be that's your equal sign his age was it was equal to half of the age he will be in eight years okay let me use a different color there just to clarify what i'm trying to do john's age five years ago john's age so john's age five years ago will be or was excuse me was half the age he'll be in eight years Okay, so let's start with the left-hand side of my equation. John's age five years ago. That's A minus five. That's the left-hand side of my equation. Was is my equal sign. Was equal to what? Was equal to half of the age he's going to be in eight years. That's our equation. I know it's a little challenging. You're going to get the hang of this. So give us a chance to do some more practice before anybody panics. Hopefully... You guys are more comfortable than you were before. Let's get rid of the one half by multiplying. I only used brackets because of the parentheses. I didn't want you to be confused. The one half and the two are going to cancel. So I now have two times a minus five or two a minus ten equals a plus eight. I can subtract a from each side. Oh. Sorry, made a mistake. Subtract a from each side, there we go, add 10 to each side. John's age now, which is our value of A, so John is 18 years old. John is 18 years old. All right, so that's an age word problem. That's the expectation here. List out the unknowns, define them, write the equation. Let's try another one. Abigail is six years older than Jonathan. Six years ago, she was twice as old as he. How old is each child now? All right, unknowns, define them. Okay, we got Abigail six years ago. We got, we got Abigail, so let's do Abigail's age now. A's age now, that's one unknown. And let's go ahead and keep this um, organized. John's age now. All right, A's age six years ago. And Jay's age six years ago. Abigail's age now, we're going to use A. Abigail is six years older than Jonathan. Hmm. You know, now that I've decided to use A for that, I'm rethinking this. Jonathan is younger, right? Jonathan's younger. Let's use J for Jonathan's age now. And let's take J and add six for Abigail's age because Abigail is six years older than he is. All right, six years ago, Abigail's age would be her age now minus six. So simplify that. Six years ago, Abigail was the same age as Jonathan. Jonathan's age six years ago would be his age now minus six. So his will be that, that expression right there. So hers will be J and his will be J minus six. Now we're going to break up our equation. Abigail 
is six years older than Jonathan. So this is not my equation. This gives me the description of what I just described here, okay? Or actually just the first two. So just the first two. So that's not helping me write my equation. So let me get rid of that. That's not helping. Come on now, Ms. LeCompte, that's not helping. What do we need? We need to know our equation here. Six years ago, she was, as my equal sign, twice as old as he. So six years ago, she, that's Abigail's age six years ago. We have that. That's right here. So six years ago, she was, as my equal sign, twice as old as he was six years ago because we're talking about six years ago. That's what that sentence tells us. What was Jonathan's age six years ago? It was J minus six. So that's what we're going to be using as our equation here. We're going to distribute, get 2J minus 12. We're going to subtract 2J, since we can't subtract J. J equals negative 12, so, sorry, negative J equals negative 12, so J equals 12. Jonathan is 12, and Abigail, okay, I'm going to go for the brevity thing, go with Abby. Abby is, go back and look at your defined variables. Abby's age now is J plus 6. So 12 plus 6, Abby is 18. Okay, I know those are challenging. Try to relax. They should get easier with practice. Okay, guys? One more. Five, an investment of $3,000 is made at an annual simple interest rate of 5% for one year. Okay, uh, how much in additional money must be invested at an annual rate of 9% so the interest earned is $240? So this is an I equals PRT. And since we have two investments, it's going to be I equals PRT plus PRT. So interest here, we do know that. That's 240. Then we have one set of principal, rate, and time, and another set of principal, rate, and time. We know the time. The time is one year. Okay, and since that third variable is T right there, I'm going to go ahead and put in my one for those. We know the initial investment for this part is $3,000, and we know it's at a rate of 5%. Remember to change that to a decimal. Don't use 5, use 0.05. How much additional money must be invested? So that's my variable here. Additional investment. Investment. And that's the 9% investment. So that's going to go here. And I'm going to put my 9% as a decimal in right there. And now this is the equation we're solving. So we have 240 equals 3,000 times 0.05 is 150 times 1 is 150 plus x times 0.09 times 1, which is 0.09x. Subtract 150 from each side, we get 90 equals 0.09x. Divide both sides by 0.09. Okay, and again, too lazy to do a calculator. Two spaces, two zeros. 9,000 divided by 9, you must invest $1,000 at 9%. So I'm teaching you investment, sort of, kind of, not really. Um, I wouldn't pretend to know a whole lot about it. Um, I let my husband do all that kind of stuff, which is not to be sexist at all. He actually is trained in it. He has a degree in that stuff, um, economics and finance and things I don't understand, frankly, um, because money money upsets me. Money, money is one of those things that can upset people really easily. Um, you always want more of it, and then when you have more of it, it can become a problem. Ask lottery winners about that. But I digress. I'm totally rambling, and it's time to quit this video. So thanks for watching. Um, go back, watch it again, take your time. Those age word problems can be a bear, but you can do it. You will understand these, I promise. See you guys in class.